So, a little bit of a mess in here. Um, if you look right down in there, that rubber bushing is toast. These other ones don't look too bad. One, two. Um, yeah. One up here. So, not a new set of four. So, let's see how this goes. So, That one looks like it might be best for a socket. We got her. Somehow we got four or five of those dang bar tools and you know a couple different setups with them. And I got a little box out my truck that I keep a set of it for when I go cut firewood. And be dang if I don't end up with everything out there all the time. <laughs> so. This is definitely due for cleaning in there. This thing actually uh, got pretty abused on its last usage. I uh, helped my neighbor out. Picked, picked my most beat up chain and uh, cut a stump out for him. So. Yeah, I'll move you guys over to here. Put on some safety glasses. some of this junk out there we go Take a little look, see what we have done there. We uh, I'm sure the torques. Uh, we need more light. There we go. Now we got a little more light. And now you can see the torques down in there. this 
screwdriver in there. Better grip. Okay. This didn't include the little washer that was down inside there. So, oh, so close. We'll do some hillbilly make it fit. See if it fits. Almost. There's a little burr in there. We'll try and open it up just a touch more. Just this bushing is in pretty good shape. And if we look at what I got in this set. There's a little cover there, but there's two of equal size equal to that. This one's smaller. This one here, which I know goes up here. So I have my doubts that this is completely right. I venture to guess this saw needs three of those larger by looking at it but oftentimes I end up being wrong once I get in there I just think it's a good idea to since that's pretty well intact we'll leave that intact just in case we end up having to put it back in now that Bugger there. Fits. Doesn't quite fit down in there. Even these. And these ones. Let's go back to trying to widen this up on the drill press. it up a fair amount. Now it fits just perfect. These look pretty close.
See now this drops down over that like it's supposed to. Get a hammer, right? There we go. So now to get this one off, looks like we gotta take this plate out, which also might mean we need to get the joys. Oh, cool. No. Oh. We got that open, safety glasses on, and there we go. Hmm, interesting. Evidently, someone at some point <laughs> replace that with a little has a little bolt head would be my guess and everything else I've ever encountered on these has been a torque so and then since it was added on Later, it's anyone's guess whether it's metric or SAE. So I just want to stop. Okay then. That doesn't look on any steel there. I may have to go back and mess with that bushing more. This crown just a little. So. sucker over oh this one is smaller and a little bit gone so I bought this saw second hand but it was a rebuild from a, a saw shop I don't think they do it anymore but they used to let people trade saws in 
and they'd go through them and then sell them. And last time I inquired, they said they didn't have any. I asked them if they still did it. And I just, I didn't really get a straight answer out of them. So, so these are eight millimeter that we're encountering here. So, you know, that sounds like it could be a steel thing, but just don't know. I do think I feel better about having a washer in there. It's gonna take quite a bit. But I'm gonna go try and open this one up. And I'll go ahead and bring you over this time and show you my uh, hair-brained idea of the best way to do this. Now granted, it's not the safest way. But, it works. Ah, there it is. This doesn't add a ton, but every little bit could potentially help. of things that might actually make things a little bit easier if I fight this one in first. So seated in there now thought about switching these over to Torx but as soon as I encountered two of them these might be what's supposed to be in there even if they're not the threads have already <laughs> you know that's a lot different of a thread pitch on that so the shredded remnants of that <laughs> got one more of those floating around here somewhere so time to go open up another washer
that's pretty well on there. So Maybe we'll try putting a little dollop of oil on that. Hard part. Oh. Well, hmm, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> and pop this one right on out. So, start back over there. We'll have to. Now we got the challenge. We'll be pulling this one out without shredding it. It's almost room to. There, it's been burned. Hmm. So. Maybe we'll leave that. Hey. My goodness. Sure went easy that time. Okay, well, can't guarantee I could repeat that, but I'll take it. Looks like this front one will get no washer. I'd rather have one on it, but the head of that bolt barely fit in there. Give her just a touch more.
よ。My goodness. Huh. There we go. But you look that one. Right there, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. So that one's not seated all the way. So we will loosen that up. Throw that in there. There we go. Now that one snapped down in. So that's tightened up. Like this. I'll cover down. I guess we'll loosen that up while we're there. Cool. So that just leaves this one. Which this one. Right up in there. And it looks. Like we're gonna need to take this off at a minimum. Uh, chokes closed. Let's blow that off. And these little things are eight millimeters, so thus far. I've used needle nose pliers, regular pliers, standard screwdriver. It's just kind of a mid sized one, so it got that small little plate off, too. Um, you know, whatever you need to get the covers in and out and fight the bushings in and out. An 8 millimeter socket. Uh, Torx T27 so looks like I'll have to take these couple off here get this top cover off so y'all just 
blow it all off in there once I get the covers off. Come around that chain brick. Okay, if you look, this one came out with its little brass insert. Brass insert still inside of that one. Oh, there we go. Just found if they come out easy, <laughs> that kind of stuff you're best off taking out now. Because otherwise you swing this out of the way and then you go to put it back together and you're missing one. Then... Looks like the two on the recoil starter side are the same size. And the one, well, evidently I'm changing the spark plug too. <laughs> I have never seen that. Wow. spark plug wrenches over there but that is insane okay okay give her some air this a size smaller? Yes, these appear to be T25. So. Oh, and there is one right in the center there. Do you have to say, in working on this saw, this is the first time I've encountered a Torx that was not a T27. So, just noticed this had little brass inserts in there. So we look, this has them in here. What this is missing is this little metal piece right there. So, let's bring you guys around. This is some sort of hard plastic in the center of the new one. Yeah, this isn't wanting to come out without shredding it. But it's, you can see a little dry rot. I'll hold on to it just in case.
And you do want to be a little careful. Obviously, you don't want to cross thread these, but if one of those fall down, it's not going to be the end of the world. You just have to take your recoil starter off. And I'm just trying to avoid that. Not that it's a difficult thing to do or anything. It's pretty easy, but why give yourself more work so we got that started so all three of them are started well crank that one in go now look at that that pulled right apart that is crazy because this saw was running without an issue uh, you know the spark plug boot was on there good shouldn't have put that spark plug back in oh well came apart just fine but hey we know our flex bushings are tightening things up given we can't <laughs> put it back together in exactly the same order Twenty-five away.
those two are started on the other side. But pretty easy to work on. I don't have much experience with other brand names. I've had one one McCulloch. I've tinkered with a couple of like the, the cheap little McCullough's the little eager beavers people buy. But uh for them yeah, they're just cheaply made, but messed with the Mac 1010. And I think the issue with it is it was just too far gone. You know, and I had one Husky, and I just had nothing but problems with it. I'm definitely a steel guy because this saw was a used saw by a faller, traded it in. You know, they rebuilt it. And uh, the saw shop did. I think they did a little bit of, you know, put put a little bit bigger of a cylinder in it, bored it out a little. But here recently was the first time I've ever had to do anything with this saw. I had to. Uh, Ended up replacing the carburetor because the needle valves are all wore. So it was just cheaper to replace it. Uh, replaced that. Went in and replaced the coil while I was at it. Replaced all the fuel lines. They weren't really that bad, but I was in there. And that's all I've done to this saw. So. Cannot complain there. appears to be much better so I took my 25 off I definitely need to do a, a bit with that chain it got pre rocked pretty bad which I'll get that taken care of but in the meantime I usually prefer to keep my chain saw ready to go so. put the 32 back on which it was time to some new chains so assume everybody knows how to do this fight it around till you get them both on one side this is how I always did it you know both of the kinks on one side of the chain if you see what I mean this one is on the inside then on the outside so if you just take either one of these swing it over like that now they're both on this side of the other chain. You flip it right up.
We got it. On the tensioner, on the sprocket. So. Hold it there. Usually try and get it on the bottom. Too. I make sure the top for sure, but I make sure it's not behind the bar on the bottom. Leave those very snug at all. But if it's not on the bottom one, once we tension this just a touch up there, we can just pull the chain through and make sure it's seated. There we go. Which it's sucking right up into the chain. So I'm sure it is. Pull it through. Hmm. Hold up on the far end of the bar. Now since it's brand new, I wouldn't go, typically I'd go about that tight. At least in my experience, brand new chains, as soon as you fire them up, they tend to loosen a little. Oh, bumped right into you guys, sorry. And I'd fire this up, spin it around and show you what I mean about it loosening up. We'll save that for another day because it is 11 o'clock at night here and I don't think my neighbors would really appreciate that too much and there we go we are Thanks for watching.